Being a new mom brings with it a myriad of questions on baby care and how to make sure that your baby gets the best of everything in terms of nutrition, health care and skin care. Well, worry no more because we at the Skin Therapy Show have taken it upon ourselves to equip you with the basic and everything baby skin care. Join me, Sarah and Dino, as we discuss this and many more on this week's edition of the Skin Therapy Show. Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of the Skin Therapy Show, an episode dedicated to skin care for babies, one of my favorite subjects. Joining me on set is Josie Karuki and Dr. Irene Jarogi. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. Kindly tell us more about yourself and what you do. My name is Josie Karoki. I'm a lactation specialist, so I support mothers with breastfeeding. But in addition to that, I'm also a certified infant massage instructor mm. with the International Association of Massage Instructors. That means I um, teach mothers how to massage their children mm. and babies in the specific effort of teaching them how to communicate and to nurture through touch. Oh, wow. Yes. Irene? My name is Irene Jaroge, mm. and I specialize in nutrition, holistic health, and skin care. And I'm also the national director of the Safe Skin Care Initiative, which is an organization that seeks to promote safe skin care practices in terms of products, giving public knowledge about skin care, and ways of maintaining the skin in a safe and proper manner. I believe both of you are parents, right? Yes. Um, Josie, when we talk about skin care for babies, what exactly do we mean? We talk about providing the best we can for our babies um, in terms of what comes into contact with them. Because as you can imagine, especially with infants, a baby has been in the womb for nine months, yes. completely isolated. And then they're born and they come into contact with so many different things in a completely new environment. Mm. Um, so it's important to be aware of what you're putting on your baby's skin. Mm. Um, in terms of the actual products that you put on, but also the clothing, what is on the clothes, what are you using to wash the clothes, mm. in order to protect them. Because when they're born, the baby's skin is still very, very sensitive, yeah. almost translucent. Mm. So it's important to keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Irene? Well, for me, I think it depends on um, how you look at it. First of all, it begins with you as the mother. Mm -hmm. Always start with yourself uh, when it comes to baby skin care. Now, being a mother means that um, you can no longer have things like long nails. You can't wear nail polish at all when you're taking care of a newborn or a young baby because some of these things contain um, toxins and which, which can easily make the baby's uh, skin very sensitive. Mm. And it's also not advisable to use strong perfume, especially when you're breastfeeding. Okay. Because I was just discussing with Josie, and um, she, she just told me that it's very important to have that um, natural mother's scent. Mm. The smell, the natural smells, mm. mother's smell is very important for infant bonding. Mm during breastfeeding and at all times when, con when you're in contact with a child. Josie, you've spoken about um, a, babe, a, a baby's skin being very, very sensitive. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of discussion when it comes to how many times a baby should be birthed. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Some people say, do not wash your baby mm -hmm. at all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. All that you need to do is to maybe just dab the baby with mm -hmm. uh, a wet cloth. Mm -hmm. Some people say it is very important for you to wash your baby. What is mm -hmm. your take on this? You can understand where the two schools of thought come from. You have on one side, um, don't bath your baby until the umbilical cord falls off. Mm. Um, and that one um, tends to be geared perhaps towards protecting the cord um, and making sure that there are no infections to that. Mm. But then you have the other school of thought, and I think it's the one that we are very familiar with here because even when you deliver your baby, the one thing you do is they're bathed from day one. Yeah. You're told to go to the nursery and mm. watch your baby being bathed. Mm. With that school of thought, it's all about keeping, um, reminding them of the uh, environment they've come from. So the womb, the water, mm. so they're usually dipped in and they are supposed to enjoy that. I can't argue against either side, mm. but it's just making sure that whatever you're using, whatever products you're using are as natural as possible. Mm. So if it's bathing the baby, um, most of the common ones we get in the shower, in baby shower baskets and all mm. that, mm. not necessary to be honest because your baby is not dirty. Yeah. So you can just use warm water, cloth, 
and you're good to go. Whether yeah. you dip them in the water for that experience mm. or whether or not you're just wiping them down. Mm. Warm water, cloth, and, and you're good, and to, you're go. good to go. Yeah. Irene, um, a lot of advertisements that we watch on mm. baby products, mm. most of them are very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. But the argument behind it is that these products yes. um, are very good at making sure that your baby is clean especially mm -hmm. the skin. Do you agree with that, that the expensive products are the better ones to use than the cheaper products? No, Sarah, I don't necessarily agree. I concur with Josie, what mm -hmm. she just said about um, keeping it simple, using products which are as natural and as mild as possible. Don't forget that um, some of these um, baby products contain some harsh perfumes and synthetic mm -hmm. ingredients which could be irritating to the baby's skin. Some of these products, things like baby powder, are not even recommended. Oh. Yes, baby powder has been proven time and again in scientific studies to be very, very carcinogenic. Are you trying to say that even the powder that we used before, you know, you, you, you put DAPA on your baby should not be used completely? No, it's unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. Oh. If you must use powder and powder is actually used to reduce wetness don't mm. go for talcum go for the natural what is called corn flour talcum powder that is baby powder on the other hand can be dangerous even when the baby breathes it in it's known to cause a powder aspiration mm. there's a problem called powder aspiration and it's also um, one of the leading causes of asthma in young babies gone are the days people used napkins nowadays we have the in thing which is diapers would you choose diapers over napkins? Not necessarily. Um, diapers are not bad as such, but napkins are also very useful. Mm. And they've been used actually for centuries. So either way, I would say both are okay. I don't know. What do you think, Josie? Um, I think actually most people are now starting to go back to um, cloth mm. um, because of the fact that you find diapers irritate because of the chemicals that are there that have been put apparently to soak up mm -hmm. the urine and everything but mm -hmm. then also you find reactions and you might use whatever you can for a diaper rash but then you find oh my baby is reacting to a certain kind of diaper so mm -hmm. you go buy another one and spend more money and realize that's the problem mm -hmm. um, I would just say now perhaps the way you wash your diaper um, and now luckily even in the local market you get um, soap flakes and I think they're made from vegetable fat oh. and yeah and those are very very good because again natural based and they do the cleaning. Yeah. Okay on that note we shall go to Rezem Lebai my co-host who will be taking us through home care remedies for babies. Do not go so far. That's right, Ndanu, we're going to show you a step-by-step -step account of how to take care of a baby for those young mothers out there who are saying, well, it's easier said than done. Well, thanks to our experts in the house, Josie is going to take us through that process. Josie, please show us how. This here is my um, demonstration dog. Um, her name is Toto. Um, <laughs> We are, we are always encouraged to name our demonstration dolls because we are supposed to connect with them in the way we would want our mothers to connect with their babies. So one of the most important benefits of infant massage through touch is interaction, stimulation, relaxation and relief. So interaction is where whenever you're massaging your baby, you must always make sure you maintain eye contact, you're talking to your baby, you're smiling with your baby, and that's what promotes bonding. You must also make sure that you're good distance between you, you're maintaining eye contact. You take some oil. Um, the best oil to use is vegetable cold pressed oil. So even if it's the, the sunflower oil. Once you have the oil on your hands, you ask the baby, may I please massage you? Can I give you a massage? And you show them your fingers. You're talking now through actions, but voice as well. And your baby eventually will learn to understand that when the baby sees this and hears this, it's massage time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So as you're doing this, you're explaining to the baby, I'm taking off your clothes. And of course, it has to be in a very warm environment because you're undressing them. Are you okay? So you keep communicating with the baby. And again, you're looking out for cues. If the baby folds their legs, then they're probably telling you no, they're not okay. If you're holding the hand and the baby takes away the hand, 
the baby is not okay. Some of the strokes we do are when it comes to stimulation, you stroke towards the heart. That is a stimulating stroke. Mm -hmm. Or you stroke away from the heart and that is a relaxing stroke. But the most important thing is the touch and the communication. So we're always smiling, we're always asking baby, how are you feeling? Are you having fun? And sometimes you can sing, yeah? You can sing a song, Tommy Thumb, Tommy Thumb, where are you? Can you show us a demonstration of, for example, when you're doing a nappy change, what are some of the okay. mental things that you should be doing? Is it okay if I change your diaper? So you're changing them. And the best thing to use is not wipes because wipes have very many chemicals in them. So just use cotton wool mm -hmm. and water. Cotton wool and water. And I know people will say, yes, but what if I'm moving around? Then yes, you can use wipes, but ideally, um, wherever you are, you can ask if they have water, carry some cotton wool. Mm -hmm. So your baby is exposed, they're ready for a change. Lift the legs, fold the diaper, wipe if there's anything that needs to be wiped. If you're going to put any cream on it, it's not really necessary unless your baby does have a rash of some sort. You just apply a thin layer which is supposed to act as a, as a barrier, but it's not supposed to clog the pores. Mm -hmm. Thin barrier. Take away the dirty diaper, so let's assume the dirty diaper, mm -hmm. take your clean diaper again and then very confidently just lift, put, close the diaper and the whole time you're still singing to your baby, how are we doing today? Trying to maintain eye contact. It does sound ridiculous but it works. Well, definitely there you have it. If it sounds ridiculous, you're probably doing the right thing. Thank you so much, Josie, for that information. I feel like I'm probably ready to be a mother. I just need to fine tune my singing a little bit. But then Danu will be giving us more information on how to take care of your little bundle of joy as you get used to the whole process. So Danu, over to you. Welcome back to the Skin Therapy Show. I'm your host, Sarah Ndano, and I'm still here with Josie and Dr. Irene Jaroge discussing skincare for babies. Now, before the break, we were talking about diapers. How long should a baby have a diaper on, Josie? Um, I would say probably at most four hours. Um, and this is also based on their feeding cycle, especially an infant. Mm. Um, therefore, uh, longer than four hours, um, it means that either the diaper is completely full or if the diaper is not full, then that is a discussion, um, a different discussion mm. because it means that they're probably not getting enough um, breast milk or, mm. or milk in general. Does this also depend on, on how regular your, your baby um, Exactly, yeah, it, is. it is. So for instance, if you're feeding every two hours and then your baby um, does a poop, then obviously you would need to change them. Mm. Um, so, and, and it, the importance of diapers is the fact that it's also an indicator of whether or not your baby is getting enough milk, mm. um, which is why it's important to change at least every three to four hours. Mm. And also, of course, um, in order to make sure that um, the skin does not become irritated. Mm. Yes. All right, it is now time to pay our bills. Please do not go so far. We shall be right back after the short commercial break. Welcome back to the Skin Therapy Show. I'm your host, Sarah Ndano, and I'm still here with Josie Karoki and Irene Jaroge. Dr. Irene, before we went on break, we discussed the do's and don'ts for mothers yes. when it comes to their babies. Mm -hmm. Now, are there some products that we shouldn't use on our babies? Basically, babies don't need much because um, our Heavenly Father, in all his wisdom, mm. created babies to be very um, self-sustaining. So what they really need is love, good love, good cleaning every now and then, and um, touch. Unnecessary products really should be avoided because you don't want to, to start 
you know, making your child addicted to things mm. at an early age. Everything should be natural for a baby, mm. at least um, as, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Right. Speaking of uh, uh, some of the problems, of the skin care problems that we um, have when it comes to babies, can you mention some and how they can be treated? Josie. Actually, what we were discussing earlier is eczema. That is usually quite um, common. Yeah, very mm. common. Um, usually, most parents can't track down. It's something that, especially in an infant, and they're just breastfeeding. Mm. So, how can you then track down the source of that issue? Um, and what you find now uh, is that, in addition to, depending on how serious it is, you're able to start with things like shea butter, mm. which is very um, natural and if you can get the raw one, and I think you can get it from Uganda, West Africa, and people actually now, mothers actually now whip it at home. Mm. And then you just apply it um, in small doses, um, just to basically moisturize mm. and hydrate um, mm. the skin. Mm. So there are certain conditions that you can't really understand why they're happening and most of the time the baby grows out of them but you do have recourse to more natural products mm -hmm. but it's of course as well it is good to refer to your pediatrician and if it's very serious they'll refer you to someone else mm. yeah babies born in lowland areas such as mombasa mm -hmm. suffer more from heat rush than you know in the highlands mm -hmm. how can you reduce this discomfort in babies um, it's very easy simply stop overdressing babies you find a child wearing a romper and then a, a jumper and then wrapped up in a shawl, a cap, booties, all these things which actually lock in so much of the body and that heat. that happens a lot everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's just, you know, mothers, mothers are very, you know, of course they want to take care of their precious little bundle mm -hmm. as, as much care as possible. Um, the thing is, babies don't feel that much colder than we do. All they need is an extra layer from what we have. Like if, if, if you're wearing just something like this, just one extra layer like a sweater, nothing more. And the child won't suffer from any heat rash or any problem. Mm -hmm. Actually, sometimes if you overdo it, you can, um, the child can get a heat stroke. And that is serious. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's, um, it's, you have to be very careful with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's move to something more sensitive. Josie, what kind of measures should we take when it comes to a baby's umbilical cord stump? It's just very simple. When you're discharged from hospital, mm. most of the time you will be discharged with some surgical spirit mm. to dab onto the baby. Now, many mothers are very worried because the baby will cry. But what they don't understand is that it has already um, started to heal, so to speak. Mm. So the baby does cry, but only because of the exposure to cold. Mm. because the surgical spirit is cold and the baby is nice and warm so you unwrap the baby and then you start dabbing a cold um, liquid so the mm. baby will cry even though the baby is not feeling pain mm. it is very important to keep it clean so uh, make sure if the baby does for instance a very big poop it's clean around there and clean twice a day mm. and that's it until it falls off usually maximum 10 days, ten days. if not Go back to your pediatrician. Mm. Yes, always go back to your pediatrician. That means there's a problem. It there might be a problem with oh. the healing. Yes, mm. it might have a problem healing because it should fall off by day 10. Some fall off before that, but by day 10, the mm. cord should have fallen off. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I shall now take you over to my co host, Rezian, who will take us through uh, what we have been discussing about today. Well, a lot has been said that it may be hard to remember everything. So here are some basic facts on baby skincare. Expect bumps, spots, and rashes. Many babies are prone to skin irritation in the first few months after birth, so do not panic. Newborns are prone to rashes. Three simple things. Which conditions can you treat at home? Which need medical treatment? And how can you prevent a baby from experiencing skin problems to begin with? Avoid diaper rash. Change your baby's diaper as soon as it sweats, washing with a warm cloth. Pimples and whiteheads. Baby acne, quote unquote, is not real acne, like the kind teenagers get. Pimples on baby's nose and cheeks usually clear up by themselves in a few weeks. And finally, prickly heat causes irritated skin. Usually appears on the parts of your baby's body that are prone to sweating like the neck, diaper area, armpits, and skin folds. A cool, dry environment and loose-fitting clothes are all you need 
to treat prickly heat rash. That's enough for today, but if you still have questions, you can engage us on our social media platforms, tag us along your IG pictures, and of course on Facebook. And remember to also tag us on your before and after pictures for a chance to win a full makeover, courtesy of Linton's Beauty World. Welcome back to the Skin Therapy Show. Quite an informative topic that we are discussing today. Uh, Irene and Josie, maybe your final words before we wind up. The best thing you can do for your child's skin is to touch them. Mm -hmm. And that is what I try to teach mothers through infant massage. It's about communicating with your child and nurturing them using touch. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be something very simple. Um, we do have an association where if you're certified, you offer classes. But even without going for classes, touch your child. Do not be afraid to hold your baby, undress them, hold them against you. If your baby is crying, and these are some of the things that you're taught, I would teach you in a class, mm -hmm. is how to understand the cues of your baby. Mm -hmm. Your baby might be crying simply because they want you to hold them. And in this society, we have this thing where you're told, do not hold your baby, mm -hmm. do not carry your baby, you will spoil them. No, on the contrary, nine months in the womb, nice, warm, and snuggly. Mm. Suddenly out, it is cold, it is bright, mm. it is loud. Mm. The best thing you can do for your baby is to hold them, to touch them, talk to them, make eye contact, tell them every minute you have that you love them. Mm. And their skin, everything about them will thrive. We need to remember the role we have to play as the main caregivers of um, our babies mm. is to also be very careful with what we use because um, they transfer to the child. So makeup, perfumes, cosmetics, all these things should be avoided as much as possible and um, keep it natural. Just one more question before we wind up. Yes. Um, is it advisable to wash your breasts before you breastfeed or is it just okay to go right into it? No, actually um, there are certain glands on your areola and around your nipple called Montgomery glands. They um, they excrete a certain oil that is a self-cleaning oil. So the, your nipple is a self-cleaning area of mm -hmm. your body in the same way you have your ears and your eyes. Mm -hmm. So no, do not use products that need to be wiped off. So even mm -hmm. if you have a problem with your nipples, use um, a hospital grade lanolin, hospital grade, mm -hmm. in very small quantities or just use breast milk. So where do you get don't wipe. Grade lanolin? You can get it from any pharmacy. Right. Um, some of the uh, leading hospitals will now discharge you with it, although you still pay for it there. But there are different brands out there in the market, and they yes. will be specifically called nipple cream, mm -hmm. and they will not be the same ones that you use for nail care. Thank you very much, Irene and Josie, for being part of us on this week's edition of the Skin Therapy Show. We hope that you are informed as much as I was. In case you have any questions in regards to this week's episode, please do not hesitate to contact us on our social media pages. That is Facebook, The Skin Therapy Show, Twitter, The Skin Therapy 101, and Instagram, The Skin Therapy Show. And just to remind you that the Safe Skin Awards will be going down in February 2016. We are giving you a chance to nominate your favorite cosmetic brands. We'd like to know what works for you. Until next week, it's been a pleasure having you. Good night for me.